If Pro Tools isn't already running, go ahead and launch it now. I'll reach over and launch my Pro Tools 11. And while it's launching, I can tell you what this chapter is about. We're going to import an audio file, chop it up, rearrange it, and export it. It's a simple exercise, but it will train you for bigger things to follow because a lot of what we do in Pro Tools revolves around those steps. Importing, editing, mixing, and exporting. Along the way, we're going to learn about the basic windows in Pro Tools, learn some of the editing tools and editing modes, and learn about setting up a session for the best workflow for this kind of job. Pro Tools is ready. Let's get started. We're at the Quick Start page. I can create a session from a template, and we'll talk about this more later, including creating and saving your own templates. I can create a blank session. I can open a recent session, or I can open a session that isn't recent. So we'll choose Create a Blank Session. My session parameters are showing. If yours aren't showing, open that triangle, and then you should see them. So now it's time to pick the format, the bit depth, the sample rate, and the output settings for our session. For audio file type, Pro Tools lets us choose between AIFF and BWF.Wave. I'll choose AIF. If you've used Pro Tools for a while, you may remember the Sound Designer 2 format, and that's gone now. So here's my advice about these file types. If your files are going to do a lot of cross-platform travel between Macs and PCs, then I'd choose BWF Wave. What's the difference between a normal .wave and a .bwf? Well, the BWF stores metadata, so it's kind of a special wave format with embedded chunks of data. It sounds the same, it just has more data in the file. It's also a good file format if your files are going to do some internet travel, like onto servers, maybe Windows or Linux. Avid also recommends that if you're working in surround, you should choose WAVE over AIF. Keep in mind these are uncompressed formats, unlike, say, MP3, which is very compressed. But when you're working in Pro Tools, you want uncompressed audio files. Underneath the file type, there are three radio buttons for bit depth. 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32 floating point. I'll choose 24-bit. And from the sample rate menu, I'll choose 48K as my sample rate. Before Pro Tools 11, these were the highest quality we could get on the MBOX, these top two, 44 and 48. And now with the new Avid MBOX, I have other choices, including double the 44.1 and double the 48. Now we talked about sample rates in an earlier movie, so I won't repeat all that here. But the rule of thumb is to choose the sample rate that gives you the best quality without overburdening you with file sizes. Before Pro Tools 10, Pro Tools would automatically handle any sample rate and bit depth conversion that it needed to perform as part of the import process, because all the file types had to be the same. But as of Pro Tools 10, and of course that includes 11, you can work with different types of files without having to conform them. For our I.O. settings, I.O. stands for input and output, you're going to want whatever you're using as the hardware end of Pro Tools. I'm using an MBOX, so I'm going to choose last used because I've already set up my MBOX. And if you're working with fancier hardware, you would choose whatever is appropriate for your setup. We're going to choose the interleave choice down here in the lower left-hand corner. That will glue the left and the right sides of a stereo file together so that we only have one file instead of a .L and a .R, and we'll see more about that in a little bit. We also want to leave this box checked, Show Quick Start Dialog when Pro Tools starts. Then we'll say OK. Pro Tools always asks us what we want to call the session and where we want to save it. So I will save it on my desktop. I'll call it C-L-O-C-K, Clock, Edit. I'll say Save. And Pro Tools creates some windows for our session. We don't need this one right now, so we'll close it. And we have an edit window with a timeline and a mix window. These are the two main windows in Pro Tools, and the key command for cycling between them is Command Equals, or Control Equals on a PC, or you can choose them from the window menu. So the timeline gives us lots of ways to measure time. Frankly, too much information for this simple of a project. So in the next movie, we'll set up our workspace and import the audio.